Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from all of the LCK spring matchups of the day. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Better being started, Pace is on the back. So will carry a owner, yeah, he 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 had an inkling. I think Canyon actually showed up there and they're gonna say thanks for the leash. Will be a big win if Genji can get an early dragon here, given that they do have a composition that scales very comfortably. Courtesy of Pays and Lahans in his bot side. Yeah, even a singular mountain dragon, it's not going to feel amazing for the squishies, but for Cassante and Rel, they're going to obviously love that one. So, early objectives going the way of Gen G as Jovi is just not allowing Faker to go Again, back. Try and make a visit as we have a possible topside gank here. Yeah, we did just see Keem kind of bait that one out. Now we have the Ghost coming out, all out used as well. And Zeus not going to be able to flash away from this one. It's first blood given over to Keen in the top lane. Excellently set up. Follows up with the Q, finds W. Doesn't even need to invest his ultimate. Going to be a big win, allowing Keen to lead. Because, uh-oh. Zeus did hold on to his flash from the last gank. Might have to use it here. As uh, Smite's gonna come down, that is a miss on that one. He does elect to just knock him away, and there is the flash, but he uses it right into the W of the Cassante, and he is just absolutely dead as the return gank comes through from Canyon. And completed item, as well as the steel caps, quite strong owner might look for a steal here. Yeah, Faker backing on a ward, but Toby actually stopped his back, so Faker's like, maybe we just try to stop this one as the tidal wave comes Rel. through. It's a Rel. You're never going to steal that one away. And there you go. It's another Drake over to Gen Z. We have Ocean Soul coming through. And the Ocean Ocean Souling from time to time. And for T1, it would actually be quite good to deal with some of the Corky Poke if they can pick up multiple of these Drakes as... Oh, there's the Gravitim, and the TP behind them! Guma carry on so much trouble as Guma will be left to the fishes. They give this kill to Pays as well, and look at this! Azeus nearly dies. We do have Owner up in the top lane, but I don't think you're ever getting... Keen what? Back and gets the max range knockup, and Keen in the 1v2 picks up his third kill! Also AD. Um, yeah. You know, Jarvan's passive, it's, it's, it's nice, but it's not, it's not gonna help you get through that. And Gen G just completely running away with the early game with a composition that has a scaling advantage. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the old days of just going for like a uh, Zeri and an Azir and you just win the early game anyway. And he's got heal. He's got his redemption back. Does not have wild growth. And will have wanted to use that here on one of his other members of his team. T1 still wrapping around, trying to contest this. Jovi with the package here as well. Faker trying to beat this one out early as some poke does come out. Canyon looking for the engage. They get the cleanse out of Guma as package immediately out of Faker. He's in so much trouble. Look at his health bar on the top side. Down he goes as the turret will help them out. And Faker immediately is taken down. That'll be a third Drake going to Gen G as T1 will give up on it. And they're looking for a bit more. I mean, Guma's taking maximum damage here as a cube comes down. Guma, not going to get all outed here by oh, Keen. No. And Keen takes zero damage, right? He's taking negative damage. He has so much armor. Keen's not even remotely in one. Let's see how far they go with this one. Keen, who I thought was going to be one of the biggest weak points here, just because of how good Zeus has been. Just with the help of Canyon, has been able to do so much work. Tidal Wave coming in, also committing on to Keen. I mean, you just immediately die. That's never going to work as desperation from T1. And Genji immediately put that one down as five members here in the mid lane just continuing to pressure up. But they run out of a wave. Zeus is going to miss the Shock Blast. And Genji just going to take a decent amount of damage. Got to be careful about just taking free damage after all. As I think that was a shot blast in the key. I don't even see his health bar move. Redemption. Redemption was used early, but now Keen in the front line. Faker trying to get some poke down. Has a ton of damage already in owner. He's just going to get burst down immediately. The package comes out as Guma burst to a crisp in the back line. As one missile could do it, but they don't even really care about him. They take away Zeus from the map. And Guma is just trying to survive here for as long as possible. One auto would do it. And I think Jovi, yeah, he's just gonna clean that one up. Doing the most damage at only 200 or 2,000. A soul against the Rel, which obviously isn't happening. And at this point, T1 is so far behind that they just don't have the item breakpoints. They don't have the advantage of the need of this comp. 
to get anything going. Yeah. And you see Gen G, they are a pretty thick death ball. He's just going for it, man. He's just Valkyrieing forward looking for kills. He's like, four is not enough. And yeah, I mean, T1 desperate to just try to get anything, but they are going to lose this inhibitor as Genji storm through the front gates. They get the mid inner as well. And yeah, uh, I mean, at this point, Fake are just going to try to TP in, but it is maximum desperation as Keen's going to get that knock up here onto Faker. He's in a bit of trouble as 1v5 is doing more damage. The massive engage comes in immediately from Canyon and they all get blown to smithereens. As right through the front door, Gen no gonna win this game in 27 minutes. No deaths! It's over! No deaths, 12 kills, make it 13. This first game is an absolute flattening from Gen G. As Chovy's gonna pick up his seventh kill, they wanna get him legendary. It's not gonna happen, they don't care. GG as Gen G. Comes really hard to play out. That, that said, though, this time, it's the same for Genji. If your Callista lane really doesn't get going early, maybe you can win through the TF and the gold that he generates on the map, but it's hard to imagine that working against the amount of backline. No, though, might be having early skirmish. Trophy's on his way. Spike comes in, but a double knockup now on a, both of the T1 members. Double stun as well as the cleanse is utilized by Zeus to get away. But still a win here for the side of Genji in the 2v2 as Flash, a handshake is going to miss. As Guma just uh, dashes away from that one. Cleanse utilized here from Paze. They're trying to get on top of this Nami, but Paze getting pretty low. Still going in on this one as the bailout is available, and he will get it as First Blood goes to Paze, and he's looking for a bit more as the double hit from the Lucian is enough to take it out, and Guma just barely... Oh, oh no, he dashes back in, and Lahens is going to pick up the kill. Lahens, I, I think even in the worst-case scenario, probably would have traded. Even if a couple of minion orders, I think, might and hop away. I don't, I don't imagine this should have much success. As Chobi's going to get caught in the river, has to dash away from this one. Does go back into Owner, trying to bait this fight out. As Owner will take a massive amount of damage to the True Shot as well. But Davis is going to win the 1v1 in the top lane. So now, T1 looking to continue on this one. Davis is going to hop away. And now Canyon, in a really rough spot, has to flash, but doesn't have any follow up in terms of damage. He's going to go down as well. That's a very nice charm here from Tovi, trying to buy himself some time. Seismic Shove is going to be critical here from Faker, as he's just going to get the flash out of Tovi. A big win for T1 in the trade on the top side of the map. Really taken very low. Looks like Genji still wants to look for a contest. Faker's a little bit low on mana, but outside of that, he's going to get a ton of bill out value here if they want to win. Oh, Lahens, he is going to dodge that bubble, and now the engage comes in with the Magnet Storm, but they're so low on the side of Genji. Owner, though, is being chipped away. The uh, Fate Skull is going to get that kill onto Owner here, as now Faker's getting pretty low himself, but Canyon went so deep for that play, as eventually Faker will be taken out. Jovi still no ultimate ability, so he will go down as well. Zeus makes his way down. And that should be T1's Dragon to take. Dragon is going to go over. Genji do have a counter punch on the other end of the map, but a much more even trade compared to last time. Big as well. Like, it's mostly just early Dirk, and then you go towards the Norma Callista items. When you don't want to play Varus, I guess just do this. But Guma gets in with the calling. He is going to kind of miss it as they go into the river. Here comes Jovi. They have a Rel behind them as well. Charm could be huge if he hits it. There it is, onto Owner. He's in a lot of trouble, but the stun for the Rel is going to miss. It will not matter as Pace takes him down in the 4v3 that was set up nicely here from Gen G. Getting in once again with that one against the flash out of Guma. And man, Gen G's getting so much value out of this play on the bottom side of the map. Means roaming as well. I'd have a fight for Harold here, Valdez. Yeah, kind of an interesting one. Zaves did pick up his first item, so maybe just trying to utilize the Tristana value, but the cleanse forced out already. And a knock away from Owner, but the timing is totally off. I mean, look at this. Now, Jovi can re-engage. They get the flash at Akeen, but total control of the river right now does go towards Gen G, and Jovi is not done with this yet. Rocks on cooldown at the moment for Faker, so Jovi just gets to dash around and have some fun. And yeah, that's easily going to go into the hands. Kalista is Varus, but with a utility ult. We're going to make it work. Uh, Ghostblade now done as well. And outside of Poppy, there isn't a lot of tankiness as Canyon might look for a steal. Now let's see if he can get it. Yes, he He's can! Well. Rel! As how many times do we have to see this? Carrier also isolated free kill for him. Zeus, meanwhile, yes, he will take the turret, but Genji, they're stacking drakes. They are winning these foot pressure on this map.
Pace gonna be at the very least doing a lot of damage. Guma, I think, should be able to clear the wave here. Oh, that is a cannon minion. <laughs> Pace does not care. Uh, Imagine if that Q hit. Um, the damage is... Cloud Soul with things like Rel and TF and Ari is going to be feeling really good as the wall. Yeah, they're just trying to open up this mid lane and look for a play out of the turret. That's a knock up on a canyon. The max range seismic shove as the bailout doesn't do anything. It's a kill for Zeus. And just like that, they are going to clear the wave, so no turret does 20 minute Baron. The, jet, the T1 Baron, it started up. Keen has his ultimate available, the teleport getting invested. Double 80 carry is going to do a nice amount of damage to this, but it's just so early. I mean, this is very risky from the side of T1. It is very T1 esque, but. Genji not to be failed, and as you mentioned, the Destiny spots them all and makes this very easy. You can't back there. Um, okay, they're just gonna fight it, I guess. Fate's Call utilized. The Tidal Wave does get a lot of value in this jungle. And it is a 4v5 here for Genji. Flash forward as, ooh, gets stunned on the rocks at least, but Jovi will avoid his death. As Genji pushed them away, but it was... Feels a little bit rough to me. Oh, we got some fights in live. It is Canyon in a lot of trouble once again. Has to flash the wall. Nice little pick from the set of 2-1, but flash forward here, no cleanse, on to Guma, he is in so much trouble, and down he goes! Pace gonna get that one, Keen nearly takes, or Zeus rather, nearly takes out Canyon, but Jovi gonna win the 1v1 here against Baker, and Zeus is so far behind enemy lines, T1 so broken up in this fight, and immediately Gen G gonna capitalize on that one, a triple kill for Pace. Four for zero! That's gonna be Nash! Gen G go for a brawling composition and brawl they do. That's going to set up the most overpowering team. You know, they've been stompy as hell. But it's easy to forget that against Gen G, getting early game leads is quite tough. And when it comes to team fighting, Gen G haven't really met their match. And in this match, as the gold will equalize eventually, the shredding of resistances might be oh, on the owner. owner. He's just going to try to run through this one, he does have to utilize his flash. But, yeah, now a wall comes down here. That's, uh, yeah, Baker's just probably dead here in a ton of trouble. He will flash and immediately dies. Looking for an opportunistic angle, but it's actually Jovi who has found the angles so much more often in this game. Genji get the pick. Jovi's charms, man. Second time he charms Faker off the wall that I have noticed in this game. And Faker was looking to hop. You can, with the Taliwa, hop back towards your turret. You can hop over uh, small walls. But Chovy just perfectly knocks him out of it. Right at saying stuff like that, Val, but you know that the game state is not looking too oh, hot. Oh, and there's another kill in live. It looks like owner is just dead. And we're going to skip out of that replay. You know. That spot for Keen. Yeah, Guma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Dead. Yeah, they're they're making this one hurt as well. I mean, the the teleport from behind Toby's like, okay, Chronicler, I see you. I'll make sure that you can vote for me in game two. We've had a lot of games go very long in this meta it might nowadays, be. and it might be two games under 30 minutes. Isn't it? Isn't like Pays or Lahenso? I feel like they did such a good job. Is this me trying to recuperate from my previous Chovy vote? Am I trying to? If like anyone did games, like Pays or Lahenso votes, I think that's fine. But um, oh, Toby, Toby has been the most flashy. So. He really has been. A possible angle here for T1 to pick up a bounty. <laughs> they traded for Baron. They will. I mean, they'll get the Cloud Drake, but to be honest, who cares? It's one Cloud Drake. It's a Baron going the way of Genji. And Guma's done the most damage, but that's because he has the ability called the Calling. And that's about the only reason in this game. Jonah Strong. Jonah Strong. He does have a gift. Yeah, you probably predicted 3 0, even though you're not allowed to do that in best of three series. Um, yeah, I, I think that Genji should just be applauded for coming in here against a, a really strong opponent and making them look a bit silly today. And Jovi, it almost looks like he took it personally as the max range. This is what I was talking about with the TF. You just have so much great target acquisition. And you layer one gold card with a charm with anything, and somebody's going to die. There it is. The Rail and Gates comes in, and Gen G, they want to end this game, and they want to end it now. The two Nexus turrets are going to go down, as Gen G will absolutely clobber T1 in a 2 0 victory tonight. They're playing with their food, just as we've seen Gen G and T1 do many a time, but tonight it is all Gen G all the way as they take them down in a 2 0 damage that they do have, I don't think really keeps you safe against Melfight. 
So I do worry about what Rascal is going to be able to do in this game. I do think the composition of D-Rex feels a little bit more disjointed when you look at the different parts. There's lots of Aiden Velvets, because then no one knows who's winning. True. Guess what? It's also a Chemtech Drake first, so... It's not going to be a Chemtech Soul. And even though Quantum Freaks did delay this, it's still going to be nice to pick up this first one. The Chemtech Drake actually feels pretty nice in the game. I mean, DRX is trying oh, to set up for this one. Action! I, I started this action somehow. So powerful. Here comes a couple of TPs. And Quantum Freaks are very out of position. Andil is basically just dead. His first blood goes to the Xin Zhao, and now Cuz is also in a bunch of hurt. So we do have Dudu in behind here. We do have Bulldog as well, trying to just poke some damage down, but the W will get Dudu out of dodge. Nice little stun does come in from the root from Bull, and the rest of them will get out. But a nice conversion here from DRX on the double teleport. No longer relaxing is DRX. Fortunately, also freeing us from that conversation. Double TP invested from both teams, but because it's DRX that have the deep Krog Ward, they're able to get the win. They do give up a lot for this, though. And hopefully they get a little bit more out of this. Yeah, so Bull walked in range of the Karma, and so did Dudu. So they're both dead, okay? I don't really... ...with the Mantra Q. Uh, that's yeah. the end of it as bot lane. Yeah, he's dead again. That is Bull by himself. Sponge easily going to tank that one up. They also get the turret in bottom lane, and DRX... Teddy is also sitting at 137. So actually building up the stacks now, slowly getting some virus. Rascal might be in trouble. Yeah, no turret is going to be an issue. He doesn't quite have his ult. He's about to get it back as ult's over the wall, and now they're going to turn it onto Andil. It's a free kill for them as the ult comes Whoa! over the part as well. Pleta going to save the life of his teammate because it's in quite a bit of uh, danger here at this point as well. They want to give this kill over to Teddy as they won't quite be able to, but it's still another DRX win. And we've got to do anything. I don't need to engage. You need to pull the trigger, which you can do. You have Bard ult, so you can at least force some summoners, and you have Rascal who could ult offensively or also find just back off completely and threaten Baron. And I don't think you can really do Baron, but maybe you can get some summoners out. So we'll see if they can answer those. Oh, ominous. Oh, Rascal's just doing the Raptors. Very innocent down there. No big deal. Just a very scary mountain right below them. There it is! And he flashed! Oh, he is so dead! The timing is so perfect as well as the shields and the heals, they come out. But it just doesn't matter. A lot of AoE damage comes in, but redemption utilized here from the side of DRX as now Rascal gets pulled over. Can they actually kill the Malphite is the question. Will I be correct? Can do to do it? No, he will not. As Teddy, he's getting in range. He's got 225. He flaps forward. He is so low, but he just does not care as he still has the flash. And he will Q, a couple of Qs out of Teddy. As he slowly does burn it down. No, so Oh, Bulldog. Yeah, I mean, they know this is happening. They're just looking for the engage. He does get in that back line, but where is the follow-up? He almost kills him alone, and he is going to kill Otto. Look at his health bar. This is ridiculous. Nobody can kill the Malphite. And our question doesn't seem to be answered by the Quantum Freaks. They don't have a way to kill the Malphite, as he literally 1v5 ults into the back line, and now they're even going to kill the Cassante. Down goes Dudu. DRX take two kills, and that should be a much easier Baron this time. Sometimes complex problems have simple solutions. You see Sen on the enemy team. You see a Seraphine. What do you do? You pick one of the oldest champions in the book. Press R. Press R. Don't die. Koenig broken more than enough because he's trying to look for a steal, but Teddy valiantly stands guard the little dragon protecting Baron. Oh, an Omicron? <laughs> It'll be okay, right? Yeah, a uh, double flash, just like that. And now they don't have their flash for when the Malphite decides to ult. And Derex is calm, especially from ahead. It's it's unbreakable. They will have to... <laughs> it's unstoppable! They will have to massively overstep. This one's just like, okay, cool story. Might not even. DRX is fighting for their lives. If they lose this series, they're out of playoff contention. And you know what? Right now, game number one, how low do you think Rascal's going to get? I'm going to say 80% of his health bar will, will stay up. As he's going to ult underneath the turret. And yeah, he gets pulled back. They got him below 80% just a bit. And you know what? This is taking Ooh. a very long time. And they killed him. They actually killed Rascal. 
Because now the knockup does not land. Uh -oh. and so the kiting does come in from the side of DRX as they decide to finally fight this one. Some very nice poke from the side of Bulldog is hitting that back line. And you see that uh, it's getting pretty dicey, actually, in these fights without the Malphite. On the timing in a previous one, messes it up here, which allows Bull to get an ultimate off. Uh oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's a Cassante. Oh, he's just dead. Okay, well, Cuz is out, but now we've got Dudu behind enemy lines. Blood are trying to slow him down. Teddy! Possible. Teddy's just going forward. He's taking the game into his own hands, and he takes out three with the executions. Bulldog is TPing out of this fight, actually, and Sponge is not going to catch him. Looks like Dudu, he might be here for a very long time. And uh, <laughs> the Teddy TP. Yeah, he's like, by the way, that's my kill. Uh, nobody take it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to press my Q. And yeah, well, it's a very magical journey back to the fountain here for Dudu. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Bull is still not building any magic penetration or any health burn. So <laughs> Teddy's, Teddy's Qs are, are, uh, are a problem. Yeah, uh, they, they, uh, they're they getting even more powerful. He's above 400 stacks at this point. All it comes in, they're just trying to get in onto the first target. But Coz is so tanky as well with all the healing and shielding. Will it matter is really the question. This is just like a massive death ball for both sides. And you know what? They can't kill Cuz. And look at this. Teddy, Teddy! Teddy get caught on the right side. The shutdown goes to Hondil. And Quanda Freaks are right back in the game. And they're not done with this fight either. It looks like Dudu on the chase. I don't think you really need to. You've killed the jungler. Uh -oh. Just take the Baron. DRX. Not like this. Not like this. DRX and not relaxed. Rascal and Sponge go in, but they don't have Teddy. And you they are went on, on in three. Just make sure that Teddy can queue. That's the most important part. So <laughs> that's all you need. Yeah. Um, Just keep him safe. So these fights, they take quite a while, but now Teddy, he's going to flap on in. The knockup does go down as now Mom is going to get pretty angry, hits the entirety of that back line as Sponge is staying alive. But Rascal, he's getting pretty low as the Q lands, but it doesn't matter. The healing and the shielding is just out of control. Cuz going to go in. He doesn't have his back line with him, though. He's going to get executed. This game is getting pretty nasty at this point as now Dudu is going to reconsider going in on this one. Bulldog does TP as Fight. not going to happen as they do not have Cuz. But uh, now on the chase here is DRX. Got to be careful. Still, Qs are landing. And yeah, they're going to just back off of this one, it seems like. Doesn't mean that much. As long as Bull can keep pressing W. <laughs> Got to be careful not to stand behind these minions, too, because the AoE that comes in. There's the ult. It will be totally avoided. Nope, he gets hit by the Tempered Fate. And now Dudu. Trying to threaten it, and he nearly gets his Senna kill. This ult in the back line, and Adil is just 100 to zero. The execution comes out, and now Quantum Freaks are just on the run. The engage comes in from Sponge as they ult in on the bull, and he gets executed as well. Trying to move in for the Penta is Teddy. He just does insane amounts of damage at this point in time. And they're not quite going to end the game. It looks like they need a wave. Oh, they're going to threaten Baron. And that they will go for it. Both these teams do want to make a fight for the Baron. TP is coming in already from Rascal behind them. Sponge is there. Sponge on the back. Rascal! Line. There it is. The ult catches the back line perfectly. They get the Senna down. And Bull might follow pretty nicely. But Dudu, he's on top of Teddy, who is going to flap over the wall. Just trying desperately to take out the little baby dragon. It's not quite going to work, though. It's because he's ulting in. They're so desperate to kill this little dragon. But I don't think it's going to happen. Cuz gets executed, and there is the TP. And they might just be able to get it done. Pleta trying to stop the back, and that he will support as well. TP comes in, and they might just do it. And with this, Breon not mathematically eliminated, no matter the outcome of the series, and DRX go up 1-0, keeping the dream alive at least for now in this series. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't kill Cassante. Um, <laughs> down will go the Nexus. Steerx, they get the job done in about 45 minutes. Cuz on the Lee, gonna have a lot more confidence in him than the Volibear performance, which, even outside of atomization, Volibear to me is a champion you need to play in a very specific way. You really need to get those early. Getting pummeled as much when it comes to the CS. Sponge going in. Yeah, Sponge hit that. 
and decided to enter into the enemy jungle, which is a bit scary. As now Bulldog flashed in forward, he's gonna miss everything, and so Sponge, without his own flash, goes back in, and maybe gonna convert this onto Bulldog, who will go down first blood over to Yehu, and Cuz will immediately follow up. It's a double kill for Yehu. Sponge still hangs around. No. And dude is just gonna try to get a ward down. He does have another dash, but he might just die first, and uh, yeah, no, in fact, he doesn't have his dash. So he's just dead. Very unfortunate, big mistake there. As and Quantum Freak's gonna move in as a five-man unit. TP is available for a Rascal. If they do want to go for this, TP does get utilized. It's now the Matsu Q there to slow them up. The massive flank comes in and everybody is just caught in the bomb fire. And now Dudu all alone on the backside. Look at Teddy, he's just in the pit massacring people here. Is Bull desperate to get a kill, but it's a double for Teddy instead. And it's a near ace for DRX on the Dragon. Dudu is TPing out! That's how bad that fight was he saw and he was like, hell no! It's okay. We'll let it happen. And it's gonna be huge. I mean, in front of Drake scaling, even on Karma, Zhao, uh, even the... Okay, nice little setup here from Cuz. They should be able to get Yehu down, although the shield is pretty nice and they will trade it one for one. Ooh, very close on that as well. As well. Sponge. Still on the chase, but just gonna clear the ward. Really big moment there as they do get. Oh boy, here comes Bomb as well, and now the Uri engages are really sticking as Teddy's able to get in there with the flash. Oh. That's another kill, just a straight up duo kill. And not much that on. <laughs> straight line, well, he's, lying. He's kinda, he's kinda there now though. Beelining so it. And he's gonna have a nice angle here too. I mean, they will have to respect the Cassante. Oh, do they know? Good ward drive from Plata. Yeah, that's gonna spot Dudu here on the flank. DRX delaying this nicely. Just a lot of damage though going into this Drake as Cuz trying to go for the steal, but a block on the Q and there it goes the way of DRX. Now the engage goes in onto that squishy frontliner as it's Bulldog who's right in the front immediately gets 100 to zeroed and does 300 damage in the fight. The quadruple shellacking in my LCK? Ah, uh, it's, you know, it happens. Wasn't supposed to happen today. Today was supposed to be. Okay, it's hey, it's fine. It's DRX. They're gonna make a mistake. I know what it's gonna. Uh, they're trying to dive this again. They are gonna stop the back. Q does land, but that's a channel something. tier from the side of Rascal and with Pleta and Pleta's uh, redemption. Oh, could get live. first turn, but that's big. Very nice here, Kwangdong. Not giving up, knowing what happened in game number two, knowing the opportunities that were given. Not, not another. We are only a single win away from playoffs. Fear's gonna come in as Yehu gets turret aggro. Might not matter though, as Bulldog is in a lot of trouble here. Mantra Q comes in, and now Teddy is going to be isolated, but he's got Pleta nearby. And he he's landing, but it's not sticking. Oh, maybe Doo Doo. The flank. Of the ages. Ah, oh, he spotted out. Yep. Pleta sniffs it out, and now they want to collapse onto this one. Mama's going to be called down, and once again, Bulldog and Bull in the front lines just getting burned away as the execute damage is about to come through. There it is. Teddy going to take down the first one. Bulldog also in a ton of trouble, and the front line from the side of DRX is huge. I mean, as in goes Cuz, but a very nice stasis here from Yehu. Will it matter? It looks like he might go down. Finally does. But unfortunately, I think that's the only kill that Quantum will get as Pleta gonna return to safety. Nice Q3 does come in from the side of the Aatrox, but it's not gonna matter as the damage is way too high for DRX. And now it's... Kwangdong are about to get 2-0. DRX keep their playoff dreams alive. The way that the mental game is going right now, DRX are so confident. They are running at Quantum Freaks. They know they're so far ahead. And Guangdong have not been able to find a single angle in this game. As now they're trying to threaten here onto the Drake. Maybe Cuz steals it or something, but Dudu's not getting a flank now. And he's already jumped out. He goes Sponge, and Dudu's just running for his life as he will survive. And the front line here of DRX is getting chunked out quite a bit. But at the end of the day, might just come down to Cuz. He is going to land the Q. He's gonna land that Q and he goes on in and it's not stolen, it goes to Smolder! Uh, it looked like that went one down, that one went down to about 25 health as well. Yeah. I'm really feeling for Cus in this one, he's not been having a very happy game.
Um, and DRX. Oh, TP flank. Yehu doesn't have TP. They don't know yet. Oh, seems like they have identified this. And Rascal gonna stop the backs. And Cuz is just dead. He's out of the fight. Moff does an insane amount of damage into that back line. And Dudu, he's there. He's he's trying to press his buttons, but he's just CC to death and blown to smithereens by the baby dragon. And that should do it. DRX pushing in. They don't have the Baron buff anymore. They don't seem to care. I thought that the death ball comp was Guangdong. All the healing is coming through from DRX instead. The TP ward not going to lead to anything whatsoever. Sponge? Yeah, he's going on in there. And again, he doesn't even, he doesn't even necessarily have to, but any space you create for this gigantic little baby dragon, uh, it, it will be enough because it's not going to take that Q. Because DA In the LCK is smolder with Infernal Soul yet. I don't believe so. And I, I can't wait. Sponge? No, he doesn't care. Bit. He's uh -oh. got a Karma right behind him. And uh, nice Encore. It's going to delay the inevitable engage as everybody is just going to be executed eventually. As Blooded did, did get one of the kills, so it's not going to be a Penta, but it should be a 2-0 here for DRX as everybody is exploding with the Cinders as well. You see Bulldog's face. Nobody is happy on the side of Kwangdom Freaks. DRX absolutely pummeling them tonight. As you and I, Chronicler, we got two Omega sweeps, 2-0. Nothing to see here actually today. Very one-sided day, and DRX very well deserved. <laughs> They're having a very nice uh, little celebration there at the end as well. 2-0, as DRX will take the big- These were some of the best highlights from all of the LCK spring matchups of the day. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.